Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February Rec and Parks Board meeting. Uh, we're gonna kick off the meeting with the introduction to a new member, Mr. Glenn Leonard. Please uh, introduce yourself and give a little background on yourself, please. Uh, I'm Glenn Larnard, uh, Leonardtown resident. I've uh, been involved in athletics and recreation and parks for a long time. Uh, ran camps for uh, recreation and parks, summer leagues. Um, pavilion supervision things like that um, anxious to get going awesome welcome welcome all right let's go over the minutes uh, has everybody reviewed the minutes have any comments questions on it all right do I have a motion to approve the minutes I make a motion to approve the minutes as written all right second I'll second all right. All favor aye. Aye. aye opposed all right minutes are approved all right, first on the agenda, under old business. Make sure I'm getting this right. All right, baseball, softball, ad hoc group presentation. Donald, if you could please give us a brief on that, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I'd, <clears throat> I'd like to remark that uh, the conversation that we're about to have this evening is only meant to review communication that may have been missed by all of us and should not leave to any perception other than us simply catching up on those conversations. <clears throat> the final report from myself and Mr. Lombardi First, and we'll recap the first report that we submitted in January. Uh, we met in December with the Director Shepard and Tyrone Harris. The committee had requested the following information and was provided by the Director. Field usage request, income generated by players' fees, cost and salary benefits for full-time field maintenance employees, as well as part-time employees. The plan for requesting additional maintenance staffing for the parks. The information was passed on to the Rex and Parks Board at the January meeting. All of you received that packet at the last meeting and I hope you brought it with you this evening to follow through with us. <clears throat> the last meeting was in January and immediately following the January 7th board meeting, we decided, and it was because of inclement weather, we didn't get to report that particular evening, that we would regroup immediately on the 10th of January with the organizers of the different volunteer programs, which included baseball, softball, from um, <clears throat> Little League, Babe Ruth, as well as T-ball, and representatives from our uh, other programs in baseball travel programs. Issues that were discussed at that particular time was the unsafe maintenance of facilities prior to games because of volunteers dragging fields. That took up a lot of time. And then there was more input that the organizations felt that need to be prioritized in the different fields located throughout the, the park system. The main input, besides groundkeepers necessary to perform the functions, 
were <coughs> pitching mounds. The programs, the program that was provided, uh, I should say the recommendations that were provided for the field renovations by the, the staff from Recreation and Parks was basically in whole not a concern <clears throat> in total of the committee, but the individual concerns of maintenance had not been addressed in those recommendations of the fields being revitalized and also portable mounds were not addressed. So they became probably the, the two key issues and the support of equipment to maintain the fields. <clears throat> that being said, there's a lot of discussion that went on about other topics, but there was some concern that particular evening that there may have been, per there may be purchase orders moving forward because of the time coming into spring. Subsequently, the organizers decided that they were going to move forward with their own letter of recommendation to the director and subsequently after receiving that copy, I forwarded that email to all the members of the board. It's been requested that some small, a small period of time, 10 or 15 minutes, whatever it might be prudent for the representative from <coughs> those organizations to have a few minutes Mr. Chairman, if that could be allowed. That's fine, yep. Mr. Bean is going to speak on their behalf. Mr. Bean. Yes, sir. As long as you're using mic. Okay. <laughs> Got it. All right, cool. How are you guys? Good. Uh, good evening, everyone, and um, Mr. Shepard, board members, thanks for having me back again. Roy, nice to see you. Tyrone, as always, you know my best bud. Uh, the baseball and softball communities represented here tonight are beyond grateful for the much needed field improvements that Rec and Park are moving forward with in the coming weeks. Let's get that straight. Beyond grateful, much needed. Um, it's been many, many years since those fields have really been touched and we're really, really happy to finally see that come to fruition. But we still have work that needs to be done to ensure this investment that the county is getting ready to make is not wasted. We're all here tonight for two reasons. To ask for slight modifications to the field improvement plan when it comes to pitching mounts that Dodd had mentioned, and to establish a maintenance plan that starts March 1st. Let's start with that slight adjustment to the field improvement plan. Majority of the 19 fields on that field improvement plan are slated to receive a permanent pitching mound, several of which don't currently have a mound in place. Not all of the divisions that we represent here tonight use a pitcher's mound, specifically the hundreds of softball players we have across the county. If these fields are to get permanent mounds installed, this will limit the amount of divisions we can place on those particular fields. Close to 1,000 girls are in softball from Little League and tribal organizations. And then our players in our younger divisions, which average about eight to 900. So you're looking at close to 2,000 kiddos that will miss out on those fields. A portable mound will give some of these fields the flexibility to accommodate multiple divisions in sports. On a given Saturday, these fields could have a t-ball game, a softball game, no mound needed then turn around and have a 60 foot or 70 foot baseball game with the mound. And once that game's done, three or four volunteers lift up the mound, take it off the field, and they can have a kickball game that Reckon Park might schedule. All in one day. So you see those portable mounds, they offer a huge advantage to accommodating multiple kids and sports. And portable mounds, they're nothing new, right? Charles County's been using them for several years. In fact, they're getting ready to purchase two more this year for the spring season. They average around 1,500 bucks, 
and these mounds offer the versatility that our fields need to accommodate all divisions of baseball and softball in our community. Let's move on to the other topic, which is field maintenance. A maintenance plan needs to be established as soon as possible. Everyone in the audience tonight, and I know there's a couple watching online right now too, fear that this $539,000 investment that the county received will soon go to waste without a proper maintenance plan in place. None of us here want to see that. I'm sure Mr. Shepard, Roy, the board, no one here wants to see that money go to waste. Definitely not the county commissioners. So to put it simply, our children's safety is at jeopardy, and I'm gonna give you a multitude of ways of how that's even possible. If fields are not maintained every day during the season, they'll quickly grow weeds in the infield mix, gather debris such as leaves, dog feces and twigs, and develop ruts and ridges from the hundreds of footsteps from the cleats our children's wear, children wear during practices and games. And if it rains on a field that hasn't been maintained, that makes the plain surface even more dangerous. Those ruts and ridges quickly turn into hard packed dirt. And when a hard hit ball that averages about 60 miles per hour is rolling on that dirt with those ruts and ridges, the ball is going to be redirected and guess where it can go? Into the gut, into the face, into the arm. You get a uh, younger kiddo out there that gets that ball into the face, it's, it's not a good outcome. Then we have trucks weighing upwards of 5,000 pounds or more out there currently used to maintain the fields. The only county that allows this, 5,000 pound trucks, right? And they're going on fields that aren't fully enclosed, okay? There's only a handful that are fully enclosed where you have to unlock the gate. Most of them have an entryway right by the dugout for the kids to just go wander out and go about their business in their, their kids' minds. Um, so some fields that, and some fields, excuse me, are, are so far from the access point, such as Dorsey, I'm gonna name that one, it's sticking in my head, so the concession stand sits here, the access point is further down this way, you have to drive your truck to that access point all the way up to field two, doesn't matter if there's kids running around in the park or not, just hope they dodge out the way or you're beeping your horn or yelling out your window. It's not safe. Sorry, this page is sticking here. And I'm certain we don't want to find ourselves in a situation where we're asking ourselves, how could we have prevented this injury? Where the simple answer is, let's make the right decisions tonight. The safety of our kiddos depends on it. Maintenance from day one is of the utmost importance. There's no time to waste, and we must explore all available options. For the last three years, each parent in this room and thousands of others across the county have been paying a per player fee to have staff presence in the parks. A fee that brings the county thousands of dollars from just our sport alone. Let's look at a way to use those fees to help offset maintenance costs. This would benefit all sports and citizens that use those parks as they could maintain all aspects of it, not just the baseball and softball fields. We're talking the soccer fields, the tennis courts, the pickleball courts that you heard from at your last meeting in January, and the restrooms. Some counties in the state um, have a per game, per practice usage fee in lieu of a participation fee, which they use to offset maintenance costs. Charles County, for example, their leagues up there pay a fee each time they use a field for a practice or game, instead of charging families for each child that, participant in that participate in that league. There are no counties that charge both. No county has both a per player fee, which we currently pay, and a per game, per practice fee. It has to be one or the other, it simply cannot be both. The nonprofit organizations down here utilizing these fields would not be able to afford it and would have to pass that back to the community by increasing registration costs. Again, there are several ways to put together a proper maintenance plan. Let's request the necessary funds from the county commissioners to get a maintenance plan for Rec and Park to execute. I'm certain with the amount of interest from the public, which is evident here tonight at the December meeting, and from the public survey that was conducted last year, they would entertain the idea. We all understand that everything has a price tag. We know that nothing in life is free, 
but the full burden of the cost cannot simply be passed on to these nonprofit organizations that provide such a vital experience to the youth of our community. So please, help us. We, as the community, are coming to you tonight to represent our voice and hear our concerns. Please, help us request a proper maintenance plan that starts the day these fields are renovated. You know, at the end of the day, when I get, get home and the kids are in bed and I'm chatting with my wife and give her insight into all the things that Bob, Tyler, John, Ryan, Ray Bond, myself, we've been working on for these last few months, she always asks me one simple question. Who are you doing this for? It's the kids. Every single thing we're requesting tonight, the portable mounts, the maintenance of fields, all of it is for the children who will one day inherit these fields. It is up to us right now in this very meeting, in this very moment, to keep them safe and give them a fighting chance at having quality fields that can be used for years to come. We're all looking forward to working together to truly make a positive impact on the lives of the youth in our community. Let's be the role models they truly need and make the decisions that benefit every child in this wonderful community. The field improvement plans are great, but let's ensure they remain that way and are adaptable for years to come. Thank you for your time this evening, and thank you for being our voice. Thank you, Ms. Breen. Don, you have anything to continue on with that or add? Thank or? you, Mr. Bean. Uh, this particular page out of a booklet we received a couple months ago uh, gives an organizational chart structure of uh, how communi communication works um, in the county. And the header is the county commissioners right here. <clears throat> there are four other blocks, and I'm going to read them. One is the Wacomico Golf Advisory Board. One is the Museum Board of Trustees. The other two are here tonight. <clears throat> the Recreation and Parks Board and the citizens of St. Mary's County. They report to the county commissioners through the director. There's a lot of information that we should look at this evening as we move forward with our recommendations to the director. Some of it was recently produced by Greenplay. Greenplay. <clears throat> A couple of those pages I pulled out. One is under challenges and weaknesses. <clears throat> the second longest barometer on this particular challenge and weaknesses is field maintenance. Under key issues, the first heading is maintenance and update of current inventory in parks and facilities. That line is off the chart. When I first came on the board, I received an orientation from the director and after that orientation, I asked if he would provide me with any information on upcoming meetings through the public, and he did so. The first was three meetings, one of which was baseball and softball. That was an invitation for stakeholders to meet at the Lofner Center. When all present were informed of a grant of over $500,000 from the state for park improvements. Now the grant was more than that in total, but that's what was being set aside for park improvements. <clears throat> Many things were discussed by the stakeholders that particular time. <coughs> Safety, maintenance, portable mounds, better field mix concerns, not just putting a Band-Aid on the present conditions of our parks, and I'm sure it was all taken in by the director and the rest of the staff that was there. 
and there were other meetings after that. The second meeting was with, with field organizations. I attended that also. And the third was at the golf course, where at that particular time, the director presented a field recommendation uh, <clears throat> for all of the 19 fields, baseball and softball fields in the county. Uh, all those present received a copy of it. And I'm sure that at some particular time in this conversation that he asked for input because I believe he is definitely interested in input. Uh, however, <clears throat> for whatever reasons, at this particular time, even though it has been mentioned in past meetings, that we take a look at requesting more funds from the commissioners for maintenance in our parks, more maintenance staff, seasonal groundkeepers. <clears throat> One was on August 6th, at the August meeting, I'm not sure if it was August 6th, excuse me. But at that particular meeting, at the end of the meeting, I asked the director a question and that was whether or not he intended to ask for more funding for maintenance for the fields. Not just the fields, but for the parks in general, because everything needs continued maintenance. His remark was, you're reading my mind. That being said, I was encouraged by that remark, and I still am, because I truly feel that he knows it's needed. In September, I made a motion requesting, I don't want to read that long motion uh, for Miss Bishop's benefit, because she's asked me to reduce the length of my motions in the future. <laughs> but, basically, but basically, the motion was again requesting the director to ask for additional funding. Most of you here this evening recall that motion. The director was asked whether or not how he felt about that motion, the chair asking that question, and he stated that he didn't feel it was the right time for that to happen. Out of respect for the director, and I still am very respectful of the director, I withdrew my motion. To be very honest with you, I wish I wouldn't have. Because I feel that we would have moved a lot faster than this evening. Because we're still where we are, not knowing whether or not this has been conveyed to our county commissioners as a priority of this board and this community. Because there is an unsafe practice going on with the public around and children around and quite frankly, I, don't, I as an individual don't know what the liability is if something should happen. That being said, one of the reasons that we asked the director for information about cost for maintenance and salaries and so on and so forth uh, at the first meeting, and it was all provided in very good detail. It helped our conversation along and if you brought your packet with you, I'm referring to this particular sheet this evening, okay? That particular sheet <clears throat> identifies the groundkeeping costs for maintenance. <clears throat> and if we were to look at the parks involved, I believe it's nine in total that are being renovated, probably, uh, our conversation went along the lines of probably six new maintenance people were needed in order to not just protect and maintain the facilities that are being upgraded, but also the general maintenance that's needed in the parks on a daily basis. Some parks need more attention than others. That's the reason why we looked at a number six instead of one for each park. That's not up to us. That's up to the director and staff to decide. And we realize that. 
But that, that figure, if we were to look at it, if we go back to this particular sheet, which was presented back, <coughs> back at the first the presentation that the organizations gave, it, it talked about a lot of uh, hours and numbers put in. <coughs> Field permits was one of the things we requested. And I'm going to round the numbers off. It's the first part on that sheet. 5,222 in summer and spring and fall was 2,393. Let's work with a number of around 8,000. Let's turn around and say at this particular time we that, that the programs were imposed a $12 usage fee like it is in Charles County. I'm not recommending that, I'm just using that as an example. The cost of six salaries for the period of time from March 15th and November the 15th comes to about $94,000, $95,000. The 8,000 times that permits field usage happen, whether they're practice or game times, times 12 hours, comes to that same amount. There hasn't been any conversation about how we could accomplish that objective of seeing that the maintenance can happen on the fields. Now, I'm not volunteering that we should impose a 12-hour fee. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that in some counties, that's, that's one of the ways that they may offset part of it. I don't know if it has to do with total funding that they receive to do things, but I do know that <clears throat> our maintenance personnel, as it stands, accomplish a lot in our parks, understaffed, and they simply need more staff. We're hearing that from the community in a lot of different ways, and this is only one. We heard Pickleball a month ago, two months ago, talk about the need for picking up litter inside the areas that they play in periodically. Uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of other examples in the parks that maintenance is needed. So in moving forward for requesting funding for additional staffing for our maintenance crews is not in my opinion, I reprimand them on their performance, but only, uh, it, it, it simply is needed. They need help. <clears throat> and moving forward, I wanna think, and I do think, that perhaps maybe the director is waiting for this board to move with a motion to support what he said. You reading my mind? This can't wait till 2024. It really can't wait till 2023's budget. It needs to move now. It needs to move for this upcoming spring season. Unfortunately, that's not the end of my report. because I'm gonna make a motion. Now, the motion I'm going to make, I want Miss Bishop to know that I have it written down for her. <laughs> I know she just said, God bless you, Mr. DeGrace. You can't write that fast. <laughs> you would pass those around as a copy for everyone. I'll wait till it gets passed around and I'll read it. While it's being read, I'd like to point out that I started off with uh, the word perception. And uh, I want to refortify that this is not coming out of anything else. This motion is not coming out of anything else than as far as I'm concerned, uh, 
all the conversations and all the remarks that have been made during this period of time uh, in support uh, of needing more maintenance in the parks. I move that the recreation and parks. John, can, can I just put, put, say one thing before you? Absolutely, push? absolutely. I, I just wanted to clarify one thing. Um, I think between uh, Mr. DeGraves and, and Mr. Bean's presentation, they covered everything in those meetings. But I did want to point out the, the, the item about the, the portable mounds. Um, it's not necessarily an additional cost. It's a replacement cost because there's already in that section of money designated to put in clay mounds. And one of the topics of conversation was the fact that aside from the great uses of removing it for softball and the different distances, was that if the clay's not maintained, it doesn't last very long. So uh, one, several of the places that they're putting them in does not have irrigation, so you really don't have the facilities to properly um, irrigate those fields, even if you have someone maintaining it. And then as it stands now, there's not even the maintenance component of it. Um, so I, th I just wanted to make that clarification that, you know, it, it, the request was in lieu of the permanent mounds that are, are uh, I don't know if they're purchased yet or not, uh, or plan to be purchased in place of those. Um, and and those, were, those were some of the big reasons for that. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm so. sorry I didn't ask for your input prior oh, to no, making that's motion, Joe. I no, apologize. Uh, you've covered, really covered, but between those, you've covered just about everything, but that was one thing I wanted to note. Thank you, Joe. <clears throat> I move that the Recreation and Bar Parks Board instruct the director to request additional funding for park maintenance and staff and equipment to address the, ma the maintenance needed in our parks <clears throat> from the county commissioners to be implemented beginning in March of this budget year to coincide with the spring recreation season. In addition, staffing should be included in the budget request for the FY23 as well. Additionally, we would like to request funding for portable mounds called for by the community organizations that use our baseball and softball fields to allow them more flexible use of our facilities. I ask for a second. All right, we have a motion, do we have a second? I second that. All right, do we have a vote? We All in questions. favor? We have questions. Oh. questions. Are we open for discussion? Questions. questions. Yeah, should we, should we open it for discussion? We should discuss yeah, first. Yeah. yeah. I have a couple questions. First thing is, uh, I guess the, they pointed out a risk I was wondering if that has been reviewed by the risk management team here at the county to take the county off the, the hook for any type of risk. I mean, now that we've identified the risk, it, that probably shouldn't be being done on the fields. Um, that would be one of the things that needs to be done. The next question is, uh, how much is this gonna cost the fees? How much are the fees gonna go up? I mean, as long as, uh, baseball understands that and they know that the fees might go up or could go up, will probably go up, this is what I would think. Um, I think they need to know that before some of this is put into motion or, you know, before we put it all and get new new people working in the field, in the parks and everything. So well, that's I, I mean, my question. In my comment that would be, I think the request is that the county provides the money and there is no additional fees. Right. That's yeah. what our recommendation yeah. is. Yeah. Now they may come back and say, we're willing to do this much and there's an offset cost, but I don't think that this motion is asking for any change. In no, fees. this motion, thank you, Joe. This motion is asking the, the county commissioners funds. to assign funds to cover the cost of what right. is being requested. If that means redirecting funds, and that's yeah, that's redirecting what funds. The, the and motion clearly reads in a, a request for additional funding. Yeah. But then the Parks and Recreation also has to make sure that they keep above the budget. They have to make sure they maintain. So, and some of the fees are what keeps them uh, in the in the right way above budget. So that's just a question. Yeah. Just a question. That I think there. it's a great question because I think that, that that's clearly going to come up as you know you'd figure out what that dollar figure is and whether it's all or a portion or um you know well i'm glad you brought that up because i'm i was looking through the notes and i was trying to find the meeting where we actually requested that number from the director we had the discussion and we requested the director to come back to us and let us know how much 
additional funding or if it is existing in his operational budget. And I don't recall us getting that number because I think before we request additional funding, we need to find out if we have the funding existing already that we can redirect. So I don't know if we ever received that information or not. And I, I was literally looking through the meeting notes to see if Mr. Shepard came back to us to let us know if there is money somewhere that we can redirect so we would not have to request additional funding. Does anyone well, recall well, that no, discussion? I, I, I do, but I, I, would, I would again mm -hmm. say that I, I mean, I, I don't know that we're going to figure out how it works. I mean, clearly, right. uh, yeah. Mr. Shepard would figure out what, what needs to happen, what can happen, what can happen. Right. And so from our standpoint, it's more of the end result of what's being requested by the community. Mm -hmm. right. And then, you know, from, from that standpoint, it's can he find it within the budget? Can right. he not? Can he find 25%? Can he find 100%? Can he find 0%? Right. Yeah, I mean, I think, right. you know, I, I mean, he, he, he's, he's going to have the, the privilege to make all of those decisions on how it works. I think from our standpoint, it's just the recommendation that that the it's commissioners needed. are aware of what the community is asking for. All right, I agree with that, which is why I second the motion. Right. Sure. Yep. If I may, I'd like to bring you back to what I, an opening remark I made. You have two boards here this evening. One is citizens groups and one is the Rex and Parks board. They are speaking. They have spoken to us. We're, we are now speaking to our own board. And I, and I believe that it's our responsibility as a board. I don't, I don't, uh, think, that's in, I don't think that's in question. Thank you very much. Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Shepard. Just, uh, we're, we're almost back where we were the last time and when, Don, you did make your motion and you withdrew it. And it wasn't based on my thinking or thoughts, but here in this motion again, we're back to this board instructing the director. That's where it was last time, to order to direct. Remember, you're, the role in, in, your, in the bylaws is for to advise and make recommendations to the commissioners. Right. And you can very well do that in the same motion that say that, that you concur as a group to advise and recommend to the commissioners. And there's a letters, there's emails. And just also to make you aware, Mr. Bean, he, you know, he copied the commissioners on the email he recently wrote to me that each one of you all have. They're very well aware of the community and, and Mr. Beans and Little League's requests already. They're aware of that. So there is an awareness. Um, that would be the only thing. That's, that's I don't have much else to say except for we're back to that, that no, instead, and, of, and, and, and instead of a board recommendation. That, that, that was gonna be when it finally got to, to the vote and I'm sure, well, I was, gonna, I was gonna nay it because we don't have the authority to instruct the director to do anything. We're an advisory board to the commissioners. Right. So my motion would be that we, however vehicle possible, we send a memo or, or whatever immediately to the commissioners in, in pretty much this, this same format what needs to be done. Right, but we do that through the director. Yeah, that, that's, that is. That's, a, that's the motion. We're, we're asking the director to, uh, through any kind of, I don't, I don't, I don't, it's I don't. in the bylaws. He is our liaison to the commissioners. We advise them, we don't so have to check it. that. We, we, we advise and we assist the commissioners. Correct, but we, we, we use Mr. Shepard as our mechanism, as our vehicle. Let me, let me take a, let me take a, uh, Him to ask the a, a minute on my motion, if I may, please. Okay. It, it seems that we're struck, uh, we're stuck on the word instruct the director. Yes. Okay. I would like to remind the board that the first motion that I made back in September was requesting. Mm -hmm. This board had heard absolutely nothing since September with that conversation, none whatsoever. At some particular time, we need to put, we need to find out whether or not the commissioners are aware of what's happening in their parks in relationship to these, to this particular safety issue. So my question would be to the director, Simply, are they aware that our fields are being dragged by volunteers for maintenance? That's a question, please. Yes, they received that email that Mr. Bean wrote that highlighted that. 
so they're so they're aware that's happening. Are you aware that there, whether or not there is any concern about that being remedied? I have heard nothing regarding that email. Okay. So uh, you're saying that through the email, it's the first time they heard that our, the, the email you're referring to is the email that, that the uh, organization just sent last week. Yes, and I think there was one more, but I, I you know, Don, it'd be difficult for me to answer for the commissioners of what they know and heard from citizens, you and different people. I, I don't know, but I know they, they know that, they saw, uh, they have privy to these meetings uh, on tape, so, but I can't speak for that one. So, so if, if, we were, if we were to look at some remedies, I'd, I'd like to continue the conversation about the motion, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would remain, uh, Director uh, Shepard, if you would remain, I'd appreciate it, because a couple of them are gonna be questions to you. If, yeah, thank you very much for that. Uh, Along, along, with, along with some of the other information gathering, um, one of the things I'd, I'd like to bring out that in relationship to other counties, and uh, we all work on assumptions sometimes, so um, I'm wondering if the director has any conversations with other counties, I'm sure he does, but uh, with what we're requesting in relationship to maintenance support for your staff is not something that's not normal in all the other counties that border us and across the state. They don't, they don't allow people on their fields doing what we're doing, do they? To your knowledge? Um, let me get this piece of paper straight. <laughs> yeah, where do I put my glasses? All right, we're good. Um, no, uh, and I was at, um, on Wednesday, January the 12th, yeah, Wednesday, January 12th, uh, Roy Copsey and Tyrone and I, we met with the parks manager of Charles County. We met him at Laurel Springs and then went off site to talk of other things and budget matters to see, you know, make sure there's some good comparisons here because I know that that's part of it. So we met that day and since then too, I've been with the fiscal staff of Charles County Parks, Recreation and Tourism to make sure that when they, you know, you talk about their budget size versus ours, that we are making fair comparisons because naturally their budget's larger, but does it incorporate things that we don't do? So you have to, you know, you're, you're gonna have to make a fair comparison for your behalf uh, to make sure that's all true. So. Uh, they have practice fields on public school fields. Now those people can come and go on those uh, and they don't, they do drag them once a week to public school fields, but that's where all the practice. And they just now got to playing game fields at their games at their parks at Laurel Springs and, he, and um, because the softball leagues are nowhere as large as they used to be, so they do allow practice there. But everything except for games are done on public school fields and not played at Steedham, Oaks, and, and so forth. Did I answer your question? Well, uh, yeah, I've been, just been recent contact with them. I, uh, they I, they drag their own fields. County I beg your pardon? The yeah, they, the, uh, Charles County uh, Parks, Recreation, and Tourism drag the fields. Got it. Uh -huh. Volunteers drag their fields? No, 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 the, no the, he the said the, the, the county does. Yes, the county does. Right. Mm -hmm. and, but they, and they also provide hand drags for, for double headers so that you know, they don't have to be yeah, they, know, dragged they have, again and so on. They yes. have county staff in the parks yes. when they're open for uh, them. Mm -hmm. When they're open, okay. The, uh, getting, in, getting into comparisons, uh, I find uh, myself as an individual, uh, we can look at what other counties do and to help us give us guidelines or to see how we might be able to change or correct something. But uh, I want, I'd like to go back to my motion if I can. There seems to be uh, some concern about the word uh, instruct. The word uh, instruct uh, is not meant uh, in my motion to give a command out to the director that he has to go through with this. Uh, if we want to come up with a different word or take that word out, I'd be happy to look at a 
friendly proposal to eliminate that word. I think it's fine. Pardon? I think it's fine. That's I, I don't know that that word's going to change the. No, I don't think it's going to change anything. I just want to make sure we're, within, we're, we're within our means I, of what I, we can do as a board. I personally think that this is going to come down to the commissioners either funding or not funding, and that's where we're at. And I think the the board is going to speak, and I think that the community has spoken, and uh, wants to support uh, our director and our staff uh, to be able to perform the maintenance needed in our parks in total, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, there, there is a means for us as a board to notify straight to the commissioners, yes, correct? Yes, please, I'd like the clarification on that. All right, because we're, we're gonna, we're, well, we'll vote on it, but that, that's, we'll work on, we'll work on his first. Do we, do we have a second for his motion? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, we have that. Now I'm gonna do a motion that well, we- You still need to ask for the opposed, Nays. Nays. I did. Nobody said anything. Oh. Oh. You oh. Asked for the yeas, I said nay. Oh. Okay. Nay. All right. Thank you. Sure. All right. And I'm going to do a motion that we, as a board, notify the commissioners yeah. by memo or whatever that the importance of this, pretty much the same wording, will 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 we'll do it to modify the the plan to get a field maintenance plan to hire people. We'll. Uh, We'll do that. So I'd like to ask a question before that. Sure. Is there a maintenance plan? Is there, is there an existing one that can be possibly updated or is there a non-existing one? Do we know that? I mean, from experience. Sorry, Mr. Shepard. Is know. there a maintenance plan in place other than the renovation <laughs> project? Is it, is, it, is it bundled or is it, is it separate? That's what I'd like to Or is there a plan in general? No, that, that is the, the parks renovation plan. This is the first of its kind at that kind of rate of a half a million dollars, the first of its kind. Other than that, it's routine maintenance, dragging of fields, um, uh, non-drag, you know, fields open for the, uh, the volunteers. That's been the history of St. Mary's County. I'm not saying that's for the good or the bad, that's just the history of St. Mary's County. Um, we have a park, uh, 13 person park staff that's responsible for the dragging of fields, keeping fences safe, um, uh, keeping our, our fences and backstops and all that safe uh, for participation. And, um, and then it's documented and it will also be in our uh, accreditation um, okay. form going forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. I got my information. All right. Uh, okay, so we have what our uh, path forward is on this. Oh, are we going through with your motion or no? Oh, I thought we did. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, I thought you said you wanted to make a motion. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you did. Okay, my, my motion to, to uh, notify the commissioners by whatever vehicle uh, we get direction on to go straight to the commissioners with this same, with the problem we talked about with the modification to the field plan or, or a field plan in general and uh, hiring people to more people. I'm thinking maybe a foreman and five groundskeepers and five vehicles and then a portable thing. We'll have to come up with, with something. Bean? No, I, I don't I don't have anything. There's there's Mr. Bean. Be done. Just oh, excuse really me. Really quick. Um, is this microphone? Good. Okay. Um, in that motion, I'm not directing, not saying anything, just just requesting that it's focused on not passing that cost on to the leagues. That that's Correct. yes. That's okay. that's because yep. okay. Perfect. Yep. Mm -hmm. And why, just while you're up there, did, have you received a response back from the department or the commissioners? I have not. No. On your email? On either no. email? Because I know this. Well, that wasn't the first one. Recently, there was one. Yeah, there was one prior to that too. And I hadn't heard you've not received any response. Period. Negative. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, if you could rephrase. Your my, motion my rambling for me. motion. Yeah, I don't have the time to write stuff down like Don does. A uh, motion to uh, develop or modify the field plan and uh, request the county commissioners to hire additional staffing. 
to maintain fields in a safe condition and also to purchase multiple uh, portable <coughs> pitching mounds for the safety of the children. Does that make second. sense? Do I get a second? I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, was that good? Was that all in favor? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there's one, one last thing I forgot to mention. Uh, one, one of the uh, conversations that came up that we had, Mr. Director, was along the lines of gator availability at the, at the fields. Uh, because of the present environment with hiring people uh, and, you know, with COVID and people not wanting to go back to work and so on and so forth, uh, it, it, something that we might look at is uh, if proper equipment were at the fields and then some training for volunteers to properly maintain the fields during the time that money might be acquired to support maintenance staff might be something else that the director may want to look at uh, to help move things along. And along those, I do have a quick question. So at our last meeting, we were given the 23 budget request and it was a summary of changes. So it didn't include what's in there. It just included what was removed or added. Um, and there was a net decrease of 200,000, 202,000. So just curious if that is something that could remain in to get additional gators or equipment or if that's already been does earmarked for something else. You're looking at those ECCs, the essential cost changes that were passed out, correct? The form SOC. It says form SOC and then it's titled FY 2023 budget request. ECCs. Yeah. Now, where, Mr. Longobardi, what are you looking at now? Yeah, that's it right there. Where? So if you go to the, the bottom of that, it indicates where what increases and decreases. If you go to the bottom of that column, it, 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 it indicates a little bit farther down. Mm -hmm. It indicates a net decrease of request for uh, funds from this current budget year to next year's budget. And your question is? So the question is if that money is still available or if that. Oh, well, that'll all, yeah, that, well. Not, or it's already been designated for something else? No, or if that no, not at all. If it's a net decrease, it hadn't been designated for anything. It's, um, so in other words, there could be reductions through personnel and different things. I've worked that out, but it's still just gonna be, is the, is, is the funding available for this, this plan? That, whether it's internal, in-house, but there's, no, it's certainly not within our budget. Our budget's very small in parks maintenance. Uh, most of it goes towards staffing and trucks and equipment, uh, or other contract services, grass cutting, landscaping, infield mix, all those things is a small amount of money uh, for this department. But I understand your question okay. is the decrease, but certainly that could be and be in talks as we go into the uh, budget work sessions in FY23. Sure, sure, everything's on the table still. Okay, okay thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, Donna, did you ask me something? About no, I didn't have any other questions. Okay. I, I just want everyone to know the board members as well as the staff that's here that, you know, I, I hope the director and the rest of his staff feels that this is in total support of their hard work, that uh, this recommendation is coming from this board and from the public. Yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is the MOU agreements brought forward by Mr. Gregory Weaver. Yes, uh, this is going to be a little bit easier than the last one. Um, just trying to give the citizens of St. Mary's County an understanding of the MOUs and how they are put together for anything that Parks and Recs does with any other group of, uh, whether it's CSM, uh, the YMCA, or the turf fields that uh, at this public schools. Just uh, give them a, an overview. overview of how that works. Yes, sir. Yeah, exactly what an MOU is. And exactly what it is, yep. <laughs> Say that again, Chair. Exactly what an MOU is. I know for us in, in my field back in the, the yeah, you have work, memorandums of agreement, MOU, memorandum of understanding, and generally those are in lease terms. Um, so we don't currently. There is no MOU and agreement uh, strictly for turf fields. There is none. Um, 
there is, I, right now, currently, there is no MOU with the, uh, nothing's been in agreement with the YMCA. That's, I think, coming back to uh, the budget work session on March the 1st. And then lastly, the major one is here with the Wellness and Aquatic Center. There is a, an agreement there. Uh, that's for two years before we see uh, about renew. It's five years total, two years uh, potential for renewal. As the uh, president of uh, College of Southern Maryland said here this past Tuesday with the state of the college and report, the question was asked, how's it going or congratulating about the MOU uh, with the uh, college and uh, recreation and parks and from the co college's side going very well. That MOU is going very well for us too with a real strong wellness, heart health in February, some specials as well as now we have an access pass for both the Great Mills Pool and the Wellness Center to, uh, uh, Wellness and Aquatic Center to uh, share together. And another new pass coming along just strictly for the fitness room because that was a popular ask. And today we had a half page ad in the paper and we're working with the college also about using their electronic sign to let people know that we're, it's under management and it's for the community's use. So to answer those, uh, none with the YMCA as of, t of today, turf fields, nothing uh, there. We still use the community use of school facility guidelines when we use, and they've been asked into a formal agreement with us, and then the big ones with the Wellness and Aquatic Center. So, and then, so in a nutshell, the, the MOU is just a paper handshake saying we're, off, we're okay to use your stuff or vice versa. Okay. Well, at, at the Wellness and Aquatic Center, a little bit more than that, because you have a lot to care for there. There's, uh, you know, you, when you have those big structures like a pump room for a pool, who's gonna pay those costs? That's okay. big. Uh, you have the HVAC, you have uh, inclement weather removal, you have grass cutting, you have security, all those things that encompass who is gonna re be responsible for what. Right. Um, and that's the, that's the way one goes to make sure it's clean. So we're, we're still, September it was signed, so we're still into it and now we're just uh, uh, massaging it and doing well. Are those MOUs available? Like on the county site, or are they? Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't think we put them on, but you know, I can. They can be. Anybody can see them that wants them, and we can make them yeah. public so people wants to look at what that what, what that entails. Because you know, they're signed publicly. They're for anybody to see. It but just, I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It, it just lets the citizens know what they're paying for okay. and what they you know what they're what we're responsible for as a county. So I know there's there's you know, the, all the rumors about the YMCA. What would be the benefit of having an MOU with the YMCA or what would it entail? Uh, well, generally when you have a partnership like that, there's, there's a couple things. Let's say one of your old fashioned public private partnership would be, oh, okay, I can bring you a good example and, I, and I sh I'm remiss not bringing you this. We have one at the uh, BMX track at Chaptico Park. Mm. And it wasn't an indoor facility, so that got by me. So now you have a piece of land, and you say to a group of people, a nonprofit, you can, we'll go into agreement with you for, give you the land to do this. You now uh, uh, operate it and bear the uh, majority of the capital improvements to it as well. So that's what it would say. So what if a YMCA, it's like, give you a piece of land for what? Uh, build what's going to happen next. So all those things that would be in there. So YMCA, the land's available. Now it's a case, I believe, but more of anything is there's a the huge, you know, there's a, bit, there's a big number. I mean, you're talking about 16 to 20 million for a facility. So that, that facility, who's going to pay the price for that? And then you go in then who pays the operational cost. All those are included in the MOU. Is there an MOU being developed? No, because you have to get a vote first, and, and that, 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 so they'll be back on the table on March 1st. All right, so there's nothing official that a YMCA is no. coming, so we no. But I did can't see put the in our, cart. our future plan in five years, we have a budget set aside for a, a new Some huge funds. rec facility. Well, yeah, so, but <clears throat> when you go into your CIP budget and you set it out in the five-year plan to the right or to the out years, that isn't an allocation into that exact fiscal year. That's part of the, that's voted on as the plan, but the plan certainly changes or can change. Right. And I do wanna <clears throat> make that comment that the plan for the, going back to the baseball maintenance is for 24, mm -hmm. which really means it's not that anything could change before then. So right. it, it's not as if it's even a definite thing to happen at that point, two years from now. So I just wanna point that out. Right. Okay. So 
that's all I had on Good that. Mr. Weaver? I think you're giving us, uh, do we have one uh, mm -hmm. for, with the uh, gymnastics? Is there like a MOU or is that just? Uh, well, that, well that's, that's a lease with a private realty company. Okay. And I got a note today about some of um, the renovations. They're gonna give us a diagram now that we've worked with them, allotted some space, sent them back a diagram, and now they're gonna show us. And then naturally what comes after that is your square foot stay. cost. Yeah. Yeah. Now what's this is gonna cost you? And remember that this is what I said before, right now it's a little bit less than $7 a square foot where we are. You, uh, buildings, to take over buildings um, that 14,000 square feet, in the, uh, those are gonna be about 1350 a square foot. And then brand new to lease are gonna be about 1650 a square foot. Okay. So that's the decisions we'll have to make after that regarding to staying, going, or whatever. So we're almost there to start making those decisions and making recommendations to the commissioners. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you very much. No worries. But Okay, uh, next on the agenda is the program open space infrastructure grant brought to the board by Donald DeGraves. All yours, sir. I'm sorry, I missed that in total. And my new hearing aids are on. <laughs> uh, the next on the agenda is a program open space infrastructure grant that you brought to the agenda. I think that, that was part of it. Yeah, I think that was that's part, part of baseball. I think that was part of the, yeah, that's part of baseball, so we're gonna cover that. Okay, all right, that's fine then. I've been through that, in other words. Yeah. yeah. All right, next then is a project updates with uh, Arthur and Christina Bishop. So just, as a reminder, I know I spoke with you guys a little bit in the beginning of the meeting. In those meeting uh, announcements on your calendar announcements, there's a bunch of links to different um, documents, including the master plan, the strategic plan. This project updates slideshow is also included in that, so it's easy for you to access anytime you want. Um, kind of go through things a little bit briefly for the, the sake of time. Um, New and changes to Lexington Manor Passive Park. You can see there in the picture, we have uh, Roy's staff has built new footbridges that go along that ravine cut on the side of the roads, it, providing access into the grassy areas. Um, good news is we did get our permit from Lugham for the pavilion, so as soon as uh, that comes in and is ready for construction, we can move forward with getting that in. Um, Still working with the community gardens and the accessibility projects with the disc golf. Um, new benches, you should start seeing those in soon. We have the new ones um, in the disc golf area that, that locations have been confirmed and those should be installed. And then we also have new benches coming in the Arts Park um, with the Arts Council and the Lexington Lions with that continuing relationship there at that park. Can I jump in? Sir? So remember again, because I want to say this, and Lexington and Park Alliance are investing $17,000 in this park. Mm -hmm. Those benches, purchasing benches for the Arts Park, as well as the reflective uh, disc baskets. Uh, the, uh, the community garden, that's another great asset with a lot of other good partners there as well. But the Arts Council, they did have a contest for those benches, they've awarded those, and now those five benches will be paid in between now and the Cherry Blossom Festival on March 26th. A lot of new additions there and a lot of funding from uh, local club, Lexington Park Alliance Club. Grateful. We also have um, several ADA picnic tables that have been located along South Coral Drive. Um, so quite a few updates and then obviously I was still quite tell a few. You. <laughs> I was gonna tell him. I'm out to yell <laughs> at you. After she finished talking. I'm out to yell at you. My bad. <laughs> let's, let's turn that street back. I didn't uh, want to interrupt you. 
Can we turn that street back? Yep. So just uh, Tuesday, the commissioners voted, when you see where those uh, two green lines kind of come together there, the commissioners voted to put it in the ordinance where having a stop sign has already was installed on Wednesday, mm -hmm. coming in from Great Mills Road on South Coral Drive before you get to the removable bollards, warning people of that and slowing traffic. So that's one thing. And then also that where the green is on each side is a, a street, road, and sidewalk improvement project. We, we believe the sidewalk project will be ready for the um, uh, Cherry Blossom Festival with the asphalt plants, probably not reopening, but till later, the street won't be done. But the purchase order has been cut, been awarded, and so a street and sidewalk project are gonna be in a nice enhancement to that area as well. Thank you. Got it. Um, some we're moving forward with Three Notch Trail. We're still taking the suggestions that come back through the <coughs> submission through development review to Lugum and making changes to those drawings and specs. Um, working with our procurement department and our uh, consultant to develop that invitation to bid packet, which has to go to the state for review. Um, and re we're revisiting the businesses where we have the right of way um, easements that are to come from like Wildwood, Smeco, um, the Hollywood Rescue Department, um, just revisiting those relationships and establishing this, the support to continue on with the project. So lots of work is really rolling with the Three Notch Trail. Go into Snow Hill, lots of good news in going there. We got a, our draft master plan. Arthur and I met with the consultants today to review the plan and give some suggestions for revisions. So well on our way to having a completed document for the, the concept planning for Snow Hill Park. Um, and then also obviously at the same time, still working on the boat launch and kayak launch parking um, project there. Um, as I told you before, all the plans have been submitted to Lugum for the design, up making updates to those. We've chosen a good example of the kayak launch that um, would be a good representation for construction. So moving forward with all of that, once those plans are completed and everybody from the consultant and department is happy, they go to the Department of Natural Resources for a review. Um, and a uh, tidal wetlands permit. Once that's completed, then you can move into the construction phase of things. So lots of movement there. Um, still at a little standstill with Shannon Farm and remapping the wetlands. Um, not any change since the last meeting we've had there. Um, have some good updates here for St. Clement's Island Museum renovation. Um, the design team did meet with land use and growth management to clarify the process, go through how the development review will be, um, expecting some final architectural designs uh, this, well, I guess it's this month now, it's February. Um, the RFP for design, exhibit design went out last month. Um, a contract was awarded for the mural removal. Um, and then you have a, a little bit of an updated construction or timeline, tentative timeline, hoping some construction demolition starting in late spring um, with an estimated building completion in the winter of 2022. We're excited about that project. It's been a terrific asset for the county at the birthplace of Maryland. I wanted to add in here um, a little update on CAPRA and where we stand with that project under updates. You haven't had an update on that um, recently. Yep. So um, we are finalizing all those standards. As you do know, we've talked to you before, there's 151 standards that the department has to, to meet um, or strives to meet. Um, we're really finalizing all of those. We're waiting on a few documents. One we've been waiting on is the updated health and safety manual from the county, which actually went through the commissioners today. So that's a big piece that um, should help us finalize things. Everything's being entered into the system. Um, two pieces to that puzzle. We have a, a website through county government where we're doc loading all of our evidence of compliance so we can then link inside of the CAPR system. Um, all those documents, so we're working on that. Three, three chapters are already in and moving forward with seven more. 
Um, on December 22nd, we got confirmation of who our visitation team will be. Um, good variety of different rec departments across the nation, um, South Carolina, Cleveland, Martin County, Florida. Um, and this month on February 22nd, I will be attending and, and other staff that have been requested to attend a virtual training for the visit so we know what to expect. Um, and what expectations they'll have of us a, as a virtual visit versus doing it in person. Um, and then our goal, well, our, not our goal, our deadline by March 14th, all of that information has to be entered into the CAPRA system. So the self-assessment is, is due at that point where they'll do an initial quick review of things and give us some feedback if there's any major issues. We get about two weeks to go back and, and try to resolve those issues. And then the official visit for the accreditation will come in May, and that's May 23rd to May 27th. So moving forward, it, it's hard to believe we, how, how long we've been working on this and it's coming to an end. So yeah. after May, we'll be sitting and waiting and crossing our fingers and, and waiting for those words. So it's coming up soon. Great. And right as a lot of projects will be done. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is project updates, unless you have any questions. Any questions? Nope. Thank you very much, Christine Arthur. Uh, we're on to new business now. The 2021 annual report put together by uh, our own Michandra Norton. Very good job on that. Uh, hopefully everybody had a chance to review. We need to vote on approval on it tonight. So, uh, I mean, if you look at it, it's just pretty pretty cut and dry. Give the attendance a uh, nice little intro and then the uh, activities and compliments that uh, the board completed in 2021. Year. So That's good stuff last year. Yeah, it was a good, good year. You did a great job. I'll make a motion yes, we that did. we accept the... All right, we have a motion to accept. Do have a second? I'll, I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we got a good annual report. I'm sorry, who was the second? Uh, I said it, but I didn't. It doesn't matter. Yep. Whoever. Thank they you. Did. Somebody. Someone. All right, next on the agenda is turf field usage. And Chandra Norton, this is yours. Yeah, we just wanted to uh, understand. Well, you've already let us know that there isn't an MOU in place. Um, so we just wanted to understand how uh, how that came about. Um, was it monies received from the state? Was it monies received from whom federal, I mean, how did it come about and what was the process to decide on installing, awarding, and how did we get these turf, these, these turf field? Because that was a, 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 a very emotional topic in the community. So we just wanted, I just wanted to know. How did we get them field? That's what you want. Oh, okay. Um, I was on the other side of the street. Um, turf fields naturally, um, Youth sports leagues, just like baseball tonight, has been looking about improved enhanced fields and saw the numbers at multi-sport fields, uh, housing, soccer, field hockey, girls, boys, lacrosse, rugby, and those different sports. So then there was a thought, um, how can we do that? And so we started up at Chaptico, and there was some funding there, so we moved some of that funding into turf fields instead of another type of expansion, parking in those in that area. So with that, then the commissioners in the first session need to come up with about one and a quarter million to get the first three sets of fields done. Then they allocated a, another, uh, uh, it, the total project, six fields was $7.5 million. It was strictly county funds. There was no state funds involved in there. Well, matter but, but now the state, we had to get approval for uh, Chancellor's Run uh, as well as Lancaster because of the Navy because those are different types of fields if they allow us to put them there. So there were counties. They started out with um, the years and years of people asking for better fields, especially with grass area fields. And I don't, I don't know how else to add any to that, Ms. Chandra. I just don't. So Ask me anything you like. I was going to say, because I, I know you had some questions regarding it as well. Right. That and you expressed right, right, for right. the, yes, okay. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the usage of the fields, how uh, are they, how do people, are there open times other than when uh, 
teams are using them? Is there open times for people to Got practice it. on those fields to do things? And how how do they? Very, go very, it's minimal, uh, but there is. Uh, so here we are. We're, we're with those fields, and those you know those are a huge asset. Uh, one of the things we want them to last as long as we can. Uh, there's the league play on them. There's the things that other sports talk about about other people using their field. I know 90 foot diamond at Chancellor's when you get there, game ready. So you put up a four foot fence. Mainly, my idea was to put the four foot fence was really animals. Uh, you know, where you know dogs, deer, all that coming on your field. So. Uh, you, we can't put the stadiums type of fence, close people out. So a four foot fence and we say reserved by permit only. So I'll get to that side. But at Chancellor's Run on field number four, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to three. Mm. Chancellor's Run field number two when you first come in, available Monday through Friday all day there. So, And why there? We have staff there. Mm. We can see the behaviors. We can see what you're bringing on, that you're not more than water belongs on those fields. If you're bringing other items, if you're bringing your pets, if you're bringing golf clubs, all those things. And that's the whole thing, that those fields stay game ready with that investment over the years. Now, we also do, we did add that... Uh, uh, talk to Tyrone, let's say if we're at uh, Lancaster Park, field seven and field eight, and somebody's on and staff is there, but only field eight for some reason is reserved, then they can play on field seven. Mm -hmm. But it's not advertised, it's just if you're there because we have staff there to monitor right. the, the use. Um, so those are the reasons. Um, then there's one other that we're looking to is that we could advertise, and I'll get you the reservation, is it five o'clock game, you staff gets there early, you come early, you can get on there until the teams arrive, let's say at quarter to five. Mm -hmm. So if you got there at 4.15, you'd have a half hour work out. Some good people want to work out on those fields, but I don't know of any better way than that to protect that investment right. of turf fields. So it's, so it's, it's open unless it's reserved? No, it's they're not open at all. They're, they're, in other words, you, no. you, you're, you're except for Chancellors. Purpose. Chancellors is the rest of them aren't. Okay. Except for prior to a game, you can come early. Staff okay. is there; they can monitor what's going on. And then, lastly, the reserve. Think about this: if you get uh, there's, I'm gonna say it's thirty-five dollars an hour for under eight. So seven of you come out and you want to reserve it for an hour and, and work out five dollars a piece, and right. you you know you're spending that to go in any pool, any other indoor spaces, and that that asset is comparable to an indoor space if not. when <clears throat> excuse me when you use the uh, amounts of money Mm -hmm. that was appropriated for the fields what, what percentage of it was open space money and what percentage of it was county money zero open space yes, all county said all county funds uh, so that being said you can understand why the public wants to know why they don't have access um, they and have to reserve. Yeah, they have they they all have access. access. They just have to reserve. They just can't walk up and. They, yeah, they can get access, and they can get it at the other well, places. You know, prior to prior to me coming on the board, I took a tour with uh, uh, Mr. Harris, and we pulled into the uh, campus at uh, Lancaster Park. Uh, I happened to be driving, and uh, there was a couple young men that were entering the field. Uh, right where you pull in the turf field. Uh, Mr. Harris got out and made them aware that uh, they couldn't use that field, they had to go to the grass field, you know, uh, because it's, I guess, uh, by permit only or whatever the case would be. So I think that's why the question is coming up from, from, uh, <clears throat> uh, from my counterpart here that, uh, community is asking questions about, you know, when it can be used. Uh, I think the other the other thing that, that uh, you just stated is that the reason why things are more open to Chancellor's Run Regional Park is because there's staff there. And obviously the, the campus at Lancaster Park is almost the same size as, as the uh, campus at, uh, at our regional park. Uh, I'm sure it's not much different, and yet we don't have full-time staff there. So I think that with the motion that went through earlier, it's it's prudent for everybody to look at th that, that what was done with that motion puts the preventive people there to keep an eye on things and perhaps open up uh, more opportunity because staff is there to... Uh, regulate or, or police that facility uh, and, and uh, 
see that the uh, property is treated uh, properly. I, I, think the, I think the director would agree with that, right? Oh, staff in there would definitely open it up. There comes a cost with everything. Uh, there's also uh, other type of priorities that the commissioners have, but sure, sure, uh, having staff in the park would make it safer, cleaner, nicer for everybody involved. So did you say there was a $35 fee for utilizing the turf fields? It's 35, a group, group under eight people, a small group wants to come in, then it, then it goes incrementally up. So like if somebody wanted to bring 15 people, it, 10 people, it's more. And are, and, and are the youth organizations paying that fee as well? No, they pay the $7 participation fee. Okay. And then tournament fees. Uh-huh. Yep. Thank you, sir. Okay, you good? Yes. All right, on to the next. Which is me, of the course. agenda is uh, Chandra again with budget discussions. So I, I've been looking at the uh, FY22 to FY27 approved capital improvement project uh -huh. budget. And I just have some questions regarding a few projects. Sure. Um, and to start would be the um, Parks and Recs 2004 project with the, which is slated for this fiscal year to spend $450,000. Um, and specifically, if we scroll down to that project page. Which uh, project my, page did you say? Thank you. Which one? Which oh, I'm one? sorry, PR2004. Recreation Community Center. Yes, so I am, I am curious, um, and I know some other folks are, as to what exactly will occur with that 450,000. I see in the description, it is for the, um, enable site selection. So where are we with the site selection and why are we still spending 450,000 or did we spend 450,000? No. What happened? No, well again, there, you have to get a vote for that. Mm -hmm. So now that's uh, allocating that's been put on pause with this, um, where we are with the uh, YMCA. This is a this is a, in the recreation and parks budget, right. but this is a YMCA. Understood. Uh, Understood. And, 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 and as you know, that needs to continuously be explained that this is not a recreation and parks Correct. effort. This is an addition. This is, but it is just included in our capital. So I'm wondering, do we know what's happening? I mean, we know it's been put on pause, but what is the status? Paul's no, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, when I met last with YMCA, we, we, take a, we took a tour of the Great Mills property and the Nicolette property. Right now, they made a, their last presentation to the commissioners that didn't get a second. Right. They, um, it was, um, it was, November. It was um, they had explained to the commissioner they had chosen the YMCA to site it at the property adjacent to the Great Mills pool. Uh, but now that's the whole thing. The vote would have said begin spending this 450,000 for design work. So, you know, before you do that, you want to make sure that you're, you're exactly. at least that's what I'm, I'm speaking for them now. You're, you're wanting to say we're going to move forward because we don't want to allocate that to keep moving forward and spend this with that really the, 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 the drive to complete the project. All right. So if I'm hearing this correctly, we, the, the effort is waiting on the, County Commissioner's approval Correct. to move forward for Correct. design, design? Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Design and engineering and all those things to get the property and, and concept plans, master, the whole works to get it, to get it moving forward okay. that you have to do before construction. Okay, so pending, pending an approval, mm -hmm. I also see that there is $581,000 for FY23. Do we know what this money is for? Has it been communicated to you since it's in since it's in your CIP? What this what these funds are are, are allocated? Well, yeah, because uh, when you talk about a building that size, the, the 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 bigger the project, the more design and engineering money that there's involved, and that's additional money for that. Just for design. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just for design. And if we look here, you you look at your budget sheet. Let's see if that's if that all adds up. Uh, so you see engineering survey in 23, 581, 22, 450, that top line. Mm -hmm. So that's the engineering work that it takes prior to construction. Okay. Wow. So if it did make, it, make its way to occurring, is, would, the, would that impact Great Mills Pool? Would that still be there? Well, that, that was one of the things, too, that you, you're thinking about. If you're YMCA with a pool next door to a pool, that, you know, that, that, was, that was just part of the discussion, so that might be part of the pause. I can't speak at all now, mm -hmm. but, um, but I was here, but so I heard 
Um, so. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, uh, my next question based on his response would have been, how does that impact the Great Mills Master Plan? So obviously we know well, that, that that plan is on hold. Right. We yeah. know that because they have That decided. would be the Great Mills Master Plan. Oh, okay, so it would be- In, in lieu of, It would be yes. included into the, okay. Oh yeah. Absorbed. Because when you're word. talking about a facility that size in parking, Absorbed. you're gonna take a good bit of that property, uh, but that would be a big part, then you'd re have to readdress the whole plan there. Okay. And to me, it would, would make sense to put that in directly right next to another pool that you already yeah, have. Yeah, that one makes sense. Well, the Green Mills pool is how old now? 14. Wow, okay. So we've been we've been waiting to up to at least start beginning the master plan, but this particular project. So those were all the reason why my questions mm -hmm. were concerning the funds. Okay, so moving on to the next project, um, RP1904. Mm -hmm. I am curious as to what the one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. Where what are we doing with that? What are what what is the status? And okay, Christy. <laughs> that was sorry, good. It is. No, we got an email today about the sports complex. That was a one hundred and fifty thousand dollar bond bill submitted by uh, Senator Bailey, mm -hmm. and we did have communication from the state today that we did provide put our application in and that's really just again to have not a study but whatever it takes to get design get upfront costs to potentially have a sports complex in st mary's county right because we know that we had the feasibility study uh and there aren't any additional monies uh, allocated so after i mean what's going to happen well, so what the commissioners decided there is because wait through, let's see what this 150 does and what comes out of this. And because of these now turf fields and we've, and especially with the public schools had now having three, we have nine right. properties in, in the county for tournaments and the like. They said, let's move that out, but keeping this 150 in from the uh, Senate bond bill. Okay. Well, that's a great segue, Mr. Mr. Shepard, because uh -huh. the next item on the agenda is? <laughs> next subject on the agenda is MOU public schools facility use. Absolutely. Okay. So it's, 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 it's sort of a mystery. <laughs> I see you giggle. It's sort of a mystery as to um, what the process is, what the rules are. When was, uh, I'd like to ask, because I see mm -hmm. July 1st, 2013. Mm -hmm. um, will this be updated? Uh, who owns this artifact? Um, you know, artifact. Who, <laughs> who that, are the that, that, that's authority? Yeah. How, how, what's the what, what's the what's the life on it? The title of it is St. Mary's County Public Schools, St. Mary's County Public Schools Community Use of School Facilities and Grounds. Okay. You would go in under their um, website and be able to print this out or review this. Okay. So they decide when it's updated. So this is what we currently use when we go in to reserve space in a St. Mary's County Public School. So this is generated by them, not us. Right. This so is they, their so agreement they, with they us. Own this artifact. Okay. Yes. So, this is their document. Stakeholders. So is there an MOU in no. place? This is it. This this speaks to even our reservation. It talks about recreation and parks in this document, general use, where we're what category two, priority four, all the different things and what our use is, what our fees are, all that's addressed in this document. Okay. So my question, well, I guess my not my question, but I, I'm I'm concerned. My concern would be one: we are using their facilities. Um, do they set? Because I haven't read this document. Are they mm. setting the price structure for us to use their facilities? That, yeah, okay. that's in there. Okay, so therefore our programming is is being hosted in their facilities. So in other words, they are this. We are the. They are the stakeholders, and they direct the guidance for the use of their facilities. Correct, we, we go through, a, they, they have a um, com, you know online reservation process called School okay. Dude, we reserve, and then um, during the week up until nine, there's no charge, weekends, and through our school age care, there's a charge, and they bill us each year for use of the schools, twice a year. And, and that's just not fields, I, I see here that covers, that covers oh, no, everything, that's even, the, even the cafeteria, the gym, the parking lot, name yeah, it. everything. Mm -hmm. And you can use pianos and everything else that has a fee. Yeah, we've been course. utilizing this since I came on in 1978, if not before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Because I'm sure they have one with, with Riken too, because I know Travel Soccer uses Riken Field pretty often. And St. Mary's Yeah, and that would, that would be a, that would be a MOU or a private agreement. This is considered the MOU for the school use for public schools to the community. So do, well, again, because I haven't read this, um, mm -hmm. are there any shared costs between the department and public schools for upkeep of their buildings, or is it just... Well, okay, so one of the one of the great partners is, again, we can go in there, basketball practice is there tonight at no charge up until 9 o'clock, and then, so you naturally, we're out by 9 o'clock. The weekends, they you know, they have to pay extra because they bring a building service, building service worker on, so we pay that cost back to the public schools okay. is what that amounts to, and it's not an exorbitant cost to us. It's a fair exchange because they have a cost associated with us being there. And that's typically what the cost is, is yeah. to have someone staffed Staff in the building. Mm -hmm. I mean, churches will even utilize. Right, so so I'm, time, I'm, so I guess I'm kind of surprised that what you just explained is not spelled out in any type of MOA or MOU, but oh, okay. Well, this well, is it. I mean, I, yeah. Yeah, this right. is public schools document to the community. This if, you know. And then you know your nonprofits and your users have to have their insurance. You can use our facilities, but here's what's going to cost. Yeah, here's here it is. And they make the final call. I think that was the big question. Is it came it up was. at one time when they closed school early, and the people weren't sure who was making the call, right. whether it was right. Parks and Rec or if it's the school. But I think it's the school's call. School. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely, it's definitely the school's call. But it call. turned out in that instance that even though they closed school and canceled all school-based uh, athletics. Activities. They did not cancel the ability of Parks and Recs to utilize them. Right. And I think that's where the confusion was because, right. you know, I think it just... Well, actually, they did. And that's what the confusion was because some residents didn't understand that we, most some of our programming is are in the public school. So therefore... Um, the recreation, you know, Department of Recreation and Parks does not control access to the schools because even with the, there was an incident with masking and the masking policy. I mean, they, some residents just didn't understand, well, how, how can uh, the superintendent just cancel recreation and parks games? Well, no, the superintendent closed the school, so right. therefore we have nowhere to play the games. Right. Right. Yeah. And that needed that to day, be explained. That day it was a early, it was a early No, 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 the day we're talking about, it was the schools were closed because of snow. No, it, it works very well there too. So it, I'm part of the inclement weather team for the county. So we're, now we're going on and we're thinking, okay, it's a Friday, for, uh, this past weekend. Great job. This past weekend, so this past weekend on a Friday, you're beginning, so we're in touch with the appropriate staff at St. Mary's County Schools. What's the likelihood? Then we got the call back, we will be closing all weekend, not just Friday night after school activities, but Saturday and Sunday, we're not opening. So we knew that. So then we have a choice, well, what do we wanna, well, we're gonna close Saturday for sure, because of the weather forecast, but then on Saturday we decided, hey, we can get out on Sunday, because our crew had been Saturday. Mm -hmm. So it, it could work other way. The school say, could say they're open, and then we decide not to go in. Right. Uh, but the schools will let us know if they're open and closed for our use, and we make decisions based on that. And then, and then there was the caveat between facilities that is owned by the department uh -huh. versus facilities that's not owned, uh -huh. because right. that conversation came up as well. So it was just a matter of clarification and what artifact actually spells that out. So now that we have that artifact, you got even it. though it's old, old, <laughs> but it is what it is. Are you good? Thank you, sir. All righty. All right, that uh, concludes our meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. A second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Did not impose. Good meeting.